Hey, what's up everyone? Ballet at Brand. So in this video, what I want to be talking about is a lot of people are saying like, oh, for Pulse Chain, there's not going to be a snapshot. It's a fork. And I want to just, you know, clear up some misconceptions when it comes to that, because what is a snapshot when I refer to it? Uh, every time that I've referred to a snapshot, it's always been the snapshot of the block height, which is what that actual fork is doing. It's recording everything for that snapshot of the block height. And then everything, at least in Pulse Chain, uh, everything before it will now be copied over as the system state. But let's just take a look. This is from Binance, like their Binance Academy. And it does a really good job of describing what it is. So I want to just, you know, look at this real quick and then we can kind of talk about it a little bit. Okay, let me get to it. So uh, it says cryptocurrencies, a, a snapshot is often describing the act of recording the system state of a blockchain on a particular block height. In this case, the snapshot records the contents of the entire blockchain ledger which includes all existing addresses and their associated data. So transactions, fees, balance, metadata, and so on. Now it says, and, and there's only like a couple of things to read, a couple of paragraphs. Um, snapshots are commonly used during airdrop events uh, before each round takes place. During an airdrop, tokens are distributed based on the balance of each blockchain address. In this case, Snapshots are often taken to record the balance of each token holder at a specific point in time. An example, the block height. That's what I've always been referring to for those that you know want to get all nuanced. This is the specifics. This is the nuance you should have. In most cases, users can move their funds after the snapshot is taken without compromising their eligibility to per participate in that round of distribution. This is exactly why Richard has never said what the snapshot date is going to be. And even though I've flip flopped back and forth on whether I thought that there was going to be a snapshot, uh, you know, date announcement or not, uh, I actually don't think that there is going to be that because now that <laughs> I've kind of updated my worldview in some of the consensus with some of the other people, uh, I don't think that he would be giving that opportunity for such a, dump of an of an event especially when we've already dumped you know 66 point something percent uh, already uh so i think that yeah i think that we won't be told personally when that actual snapshot's going to be because if we were then similar to the big payday right people would just stake for that one day or have their snapshot their coins in their possession for that one day and then they would sell once they realized that the snapshot was over because they knew that they were going to get a copy, um, you know, since that actual snapshot that they had recorded. All right. So, and this will be the, the last one right here. Uh, snapshots are also important during blockchain hard forks, which is what this is. It's not an airdrop. It is a hard fork of the system state that snapshots the blockchain, uh, the actual block height at a certain, at a certain level. Uh, so as they mark the block height in which the main chain will be recorded, uh, before giving birth to the new chain. For instance, when Bitcoin Cash hard fork took place on August 1st, 2017, every blockchain address that had Bitcoins at block 478,558 had the balance copied on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. The reason for that is because both blockchains share the, share the same historical data prior to the fork. Uh, as soon as the split is done, each blockchain will operate independently. So that's how pull chain will happen. And another interesting thing that's just kind of a thought idea is Richard has mentioned that they might just do the snapshot without telling anybody and then have the actual chain, the mainnet itself be running while everyone's kind of just in the background and then have that chain running for, I don't know, a week, two weeks, however long while while people just think it's testnet or while XYZ reason. And in reality, it's the main chain running before the actual trading is opened. That's another possibility that I've heard Richard talking about as far as not giving specific days and in details of when the snapshot would be 
and when the release, et cetera, would be. So that is something that is a possibility. Let's get back to it. Uh, so one last, one last paragraph. So another use of snapshots is to record the, the BNB balance of users that are willing to participate in initial exchange offerings that take place on the Binance Launchpad. However, the snapshots follow particular rules according to the guidelines of each project. In some cases, the snapshots are taken at random, uh, at a random time each day, and then the user's balances are averaged with a predefined period. So that's kind of interesting as well, but not really applicable. I could have gone out without that last uh, paragraph since it's not really relevant to our kind of uh, snapshot. But once again, that is the snapshot and how it works. Um, once that hard fork does happen and the chain itself splits off, then you know we can incorporate some of the changes that Ethereum makes if we want to, or we don't have to incorporate those changes. We're our own chain and we can choose what we want to incorporate uh, as well. So that's it. Hope it was informative. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you know, save them for my next stream because um, I'm probably not going to be able to get to all the comments here. But if you have any questions, I guess just comment down below and hopefully someone else can help you out.